All right. Oh, okay. Um, you don't look like a typical smuggler. No truer words have ever been said. I'm far more exciting than some small-time peddlers from Footfall. Allow me to introduce myself properly. I am Jai Amira Fatkhain Tamiri Ash Ifrit, the twelfth daughter of the Lord of Ifrit, a distant world at the fringes of the Imperium. That was a mouthful of a name, damn. The youngest child is destined to become a bargaining chip in the family's political games. But I was unwilling to accept such a fate, and wanted to choose what to become, and which path to follow. When I learned the Exalted One watches over hundreds of other worlds amidst distant stars, I understood there was an entire world of opportunities beyond Ifrit. All I had to do was break the familial bonds tying me down and escape the planet. Which I did a long time ago. Hmm. Judging by your implants, you've had quite a few close shaves over the years. Consider it a mark of my trade. This year? Xenos. Dumb-headed orcs. Who knew that we weren't the only ones to get tempted by the wreck of that raider? As for this treasure, I received it as a reward for a life that had been just a little too good. I was in a hurry to get to the Adeptus Amasakis after the Exalted One blessed me with immense wealth. I was two back streets away from the den when a pathetic Ashmag attacked me, envious of somebody else's fortune. Tech, you succeeded. You are familiar with implants like the one she has replaced, that has replaced Jai's neck. It is merely one part of a massive augmentation, placing the internal organs. A slit throat could not have uh, could not have been the cause for installing such a sophisticated device. Yikes. Um, why did you choose to come to the Coronas Expanse? The Coronas Expanse. A gorgeous name, isn't it? But this backwater wasn't my original destination when I escaped, Sherry. Oh no, it was the rumors of incredible freedom that brought me to the Coronas Expanse. Freedom that is generously bestowed upon everyone who can survive in these parts. All doors are open here. You can become a saint, a mogul, a kingmaker, or anyone you like, really. Here, hard work pays off, unless you're used to lying by the roadside and complaining instead of toiling for the good of your soul, glory, wallet, or whatever floats your boat. I'm used to working hard, and so I found my blessing. Thank you for sharing. All relationships are based on mutual trust. That goes for business, too. Um, <laughs> you must forgive my prying, but has the esteemed princess's heart been claimed by some lucky fellow? Or lucky lady, you mean? Oh, oh. My heart has been coveted oh. by proud men with hard eyes, gentle maidens with sensual voices, imperious lords and fierce leaders of void brigands. Only rogue traders have not yet featured among Jai Hedari's intimate friends. Why do you ask, Sherry? <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps I shall grant you the high honor of serving as my knightly delight. <laughs> uh, I enjoy being with you. But I would like us to spend more time together. Oh, that one sounds good too. I need to know who I must kill to rid myself of a rival, man or woman. Oh, you ruthless, cruel creature. Would you really kill a person purely out of jealousy? Or two or three people? Rogue traders are a fearsome breed. My heart trembles to witness it. How fortunate then that you will not have to spill the blood of any lovesick innocent, for none has any rightful claim on me. They all languish in their passion at a respectful distance, mourning and cursing their cruel fate. If you are not simply amusing yourself by toying with my feelings, then why not give it a try? Go on. Or wait. You haven't yet asked how I feel about being your romantic partner. Ask soon, Sherin. <laughs> Drop to one knee, my dazzling one. Can I trust you that you hold in your heart at least the smallest drop of regard for me? <laughs> what the frick? Um, ask meekly. I don't know like this.
Will you be my uh, uh, romantic partner? I think I'm just going to ask that one. Here we go. Of course I will. Hey! How could I say no? <laughs> how would you like? To, how would you? Uh, what would you say to go into my chambers right now? I have a pool for ambulations. Ambulations? Oh, okay. Uh, I should wait for you to treat me to a token of your affection. <laughs> Uh, I'm inviting you for dinner over some decent wine. I'm sure we shall find a fertile topic of conversation. <laughs> what is this? What are these responses? I'm going to go with that one. I like that one. I have no doubt that you are a wonderful conversationalist, Shireen. I will make a note of your invitation and make sure to take you up on it when I next get hungry. But if the feelings in your soul have become a fire that is burning you up from within, then you may express them by bestowing a gift upon your humble servant. Okay, all right. Uh, now that was kind of easy. Okay. Um, uh, uh, was there some business you wish to discuss? Oh, Sherine, I did manage to spark your interest. Allow me to invite you to a more private place. My words are meant for your ears alone. Ah, uh, here we go. My chambers, not voice acted. <laughs> right? Oh. What the frick? I was in the, I was in the, what is this? Oh. Yeah? Okay. Hi. Liquor of dozen candles lay across Jai's face, making her small smile appear even more mysterious. Shireen, the exalted one himself, brought us together the day you crossed Vlad Vladams, Vladams the threshold. He led us to the cargo and gave his blessing for its return. Do you know what people on my world say when such a thing happens? What's gained is to be shared with your neighbor. She points at the containers in front of her. One contains a polished Eldari rifle. A rare model, and the other is holds an ornate sword. Oh. I'm sharing what I've gained with you. Please accept these humble gifts in honor of, uh, in honor of our wildly successful, though suddenly struck, friendship. Uh, what, a, what a truly wonderful gift. I accept it with gratitude. I knew you would appreciate the Xenos' mastery of their craft. So, the matter I want to discuss with you in, in relation to my business... I know that I sell, or you know that I sell Xeno artifacts to interested Imperial subjects and Imperial trinkets to Xenos. Business is going well. My network runs even without my participation. But when it comes to the expansion, well, that is where I hit a wall. Rivals envious of my, envious of my success. Falco especially. I am certain the theft of the cargo was his doing, but I can never predict what that Ashmag will do next. And while the Imperium's authority may be fragmented in the Expanse, it could crack down on, on my peop uh, on, on people of my profession at any moment. Okay, go on. If the rogue trader put in a good word for me, the servants of the Adeptus Administratum, I could become an official trade representative of the Imperium. Just imagine it, a little scrap of paper will offer me and my agents protection against Ashmag's schemes Far better than any refractor field. Even the Inquisition will have to think twice before they mess with me, because I'll be a representative of the law in my own right. And the best part of all is that this will cost you precisely nothing, Shireen. All you have to do is stop by the Administratum Palace and obtain a certificate from the Master of Seals. My informants tell me that the palace is located on Dargonus, your capital world. You see how everything is aligned so wonderfully. And of course, I would repay you in kind. Oh. Sounds simple enough. I will help you. Exalted one, bless you, Shireen. I couldn't find a better business partner in all the expanse. Friendship is a gift from the exalted one, and we must cherish it. And you will have no complaints about our friendship, Shireen. I may not be a trade representative of the Imperial just yet, but I can still help you with whatever you need. You must need some. F uh, you must have some faction in mind that you would like to establish relationships with. The severe Drusians, the hot-headed pirates of the Caspalica, 
You really need to use the right words, like a key for a lock, and people will open their hearts to you or their wallets. I will arrange everything you merely have to ask. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, really? Um, okay, and that's the explorers, right? It's the Drusians, and that's the Caspalican. The uh, thing is, it'd be nice to see what the... Oh, these guys do Xeno artifacts. Okay. What do these guys do? Relics and artifacts. Right. What about these guys? The ex oh, these are the Explorators. Maybe we do the, um, the Drusians. 2,000. I need to rep a faction rep to them. Not a problem, Shereen. I will have my people put in a good word for you in the right circles. I will humbly await... Uh, wait until you steer your vessel towards Dargonus. The, um... The, the Macantium. The Macantum. Tabloa... Official. <laughs> it almost sounds like... Uh, it almost sounds as majestic as the Warrant of Trade. If you say so. Complete a development project of the highest difficulty... Talk to the Master of Seals. Well, got a bunch of new quests now. Right. Does she have anything else I want to talk about? May the Exalted One protect you. Have you grown bored with our little talk, Shireen? <laughs> oh, I have no doubt you will. I doubt you have any expertise in this, but what gift do you think I could give to Jai? Given the high status of the unit from Valancius and her services rendered to the Adeptus Mechanicus, perhaps a request for special leniency for the unit Jai Hidari, the sentence of oblivion without servitorization that is stipulated for her crimes, may instead be commuted to immediate redemptive servitude in perpetuous. I mean, um... Ah, sounds like a good gift to me. Then, hypothetically, in time she would be able to compensate for a small portion of the sacrileges she has committed against the Omnissiah. It would be a most generous gift. However, this act of mercy is not advisable. For it is undeserved. Thanks. May your labors be effective and fruitful. Alrighty. So that was um, <clears throat> enlightening. Is there a? Is this guy? Is this guy dead? What's? What are these guys doing? Are they sleeping? Are they slacking off on the job? Like what's going on? Guys. When Adira sees you, her lips curve into a smile. She nods at something over your shoulder. Over my shoulder. <clears throat> what kind of gift should I give Jai? <laughs> well, it would have to be something that screams. Look how much the rogue trader loves me in the faces of everyone she meets. Like a fabulous gown beyond anything that even the noble women of Dargonis can acquire. A princess of smugglers would love the opportunity to rub the nobility's noses in her newfound privileges. Sure, these guys are being very helpful. And they're, uh... In their uh, endeavors to give me a gift idea. I mean, Heinrich's not going to know, right? Lord Abelard, Captain. Lord Captain. Seneschal, what gift should I give? Uh, what gift would you give to the girl you liked? I used to give Genusian lilies to the girl I liked, but the species long since extinct. Now it lives only in my memory. <laughs> Ask someone else, your ladyship. I am too old to remember how to charm young ladies. Yeah, tell me. Lord Captain. You're all useless. Vigdis, you're on my side, right? Remind me who you are. I like how the fact that I can just walk up to Vigdis and ask 
Sorry, who are you again? I'm sorry. What's your what's your purpose here? Cassia. Yuki. <laughs> Words cannot describe how boring the bridge is without our stimulating conversations. What kind of gift do you think would please Jai? I know very little about how ordinary couples come together. The books I have read always skirted around that side of life, keeping silent on the matter. Uh, a heartfelt poem, perhaps? I'm not sure Jai enjoys poetry, though. <laughs> I have enjoyed your company. Thank you for the conversation. <sighs> All right, Argenta. I mean, greetings. This is this is not going to be subtle. Oh, she has something else we want to talk about as well. Let's ask her about the gift first for Jai. If you want to do her good, give her a dose of conscience and a fear of the Emperor. That is what she truly needs. But if you want to please her, give her some meaningless jewellery, expensive and shiny. Such baubles wield magical power over hearts like hers. Thank you. That's actually probably the most insightful I've had since <laughs> I started this whole thing. Uh, I'm waiting for you to tell me about your past and to explain the strange words of the cultists on Footfall. Yes, I'm ready. I would ask only one thing of you, rogue trader. If I may, I would like to see the chamber of the sacred warrant and kneel before the relic touched by the Emperor himself. A difficult conversation lies ahead of us, and I wish to pray by the relic before I lay my soul bare. Alrighty, let's do it. I thought it was going to be, I wish to come to your chambers and not be voice acted, <laughs> so you have to speak. Oh, sorry, press any key. Wait, uh... Argenta drops to her knees, her hands making the sign of the Aquila. Her eyes are locked on the sweeping signature of the warrant, a seemingly mundane thing, merely a flourish on a piece of paper, unless one knows whose hand left that mark and whose blood is on that paper. She's doing a uh, prayer? Thou? If thou seest a flaw in me, smite me. She likes to be smited. Burn me. Oh, grace me. Here we go. If thou, if thou seest a light in me, grace me. And if thou hearest a plea of mine, bless me. Okay. For I breathe by the will of the thine. She's very, very uh, religious. Or at least... Yeah, I guess it's potentially the... Is it religious? Yes, it is. Rotator, we need to talk. Or rather, I need to tell you something. The truth... The truth about how it ended up on Theodora von Valencia's ship and about the cultists we encountered on Footfall. I'm listening. Please understand, I couldn't trust you before. Rude. I'll tell you my story and you'll see why. I'll start at the beginning. It's easier to piece everything together that way. Upon arriving at the Expanse and on Footfall... I found no purpose here, only torment. I wasn't needed. The reliquy I had been assigned to safeguard was already well protected by the Reverend, and no one was even trying to defile it, for it was all lawlessness. For, for all its lawlessness, for it respects the worship of the Emperor. That was when Lady Theodora, head of your dynasty, appeared. She became an agent of divine will, in a way. It was from her that I learned that, that about a planet recently discovering, recently discovered by her scouts, Salus Prime. For a rogue trader, the planet was of little interest, a feral world away from convenient warp routes. But for me, for me, learning about its existence was a revelation. I've never heard of such a planet. Does it belong to the Von Valencius dynasty? Yes. Now the planet is yours by right. But it's not as simple as that. The, the warp route leading to it was lost. I will explain in, in due time. May I continue? Yes, please do. The description of Salus Prime was familiar to me. It seemed very fim sim similar to a world from an ancient legend. The legend of Saint Argenta and her ship. Argenta, the living saint, she is my patroness. The order named, her after, uh, named me after her. She died millennia ago when heretics caused her ship to fall from the skies. 
but even those blasphemers could not touch Argenta's ashes or her holy relic, the One Star. For the fallen ship which is now served as the resting place for the saints' remains would only allow the truly righteous to enter. All others would meet their death. Imagine what I felt when this flash of insight came upon me. The world where Saint Argenta's ship fell was merely a vague legend, but no one knew its actual whereabouts. And suddenly, I myself, named after the saint, come across the information. I realized at that moment that this was a portent, portent, and that I must journey to the planet and find the ship. And so I asked the reverend to let me go for a, uh, for a time on a personal pilgrimage. I boarded Theodora's ship and the and demanded passage to the newly discovered planet. Um, so what happened next? Defeat. The ship's augers failed to detect anything of note during orbital scanning. I was expecting this though, according to the legend, the ship can conceal itself from the naked eye and only a pilgrim guided by pure heart can find it. What I didn't expect was an ambush waiting for us on the planet. I landed there with a small unit provided by Theodora. I know say Argenta's... Ha... Um, how, do you, how do you say that? Agofri... Agofri... I don't know. <laughs> by heart. I know all the legends about her. I followed her obscure clues, the descriptions of mountains and rivers from millennia of tales. And I was certain that I had found a way to the ship. And that's when we were attacked. The words we heard in the heretic shrine on footfall, something about ways, doors, police addressed to come to some lord at the edge of daybreak. They were the same words as those spoken by the cultists who attacked us on Salas Prime. A whole unit perished. All those honest, brave people I had uh, led to search for the relic. It was only by a miracle that I didn't perish along with them. I didn't connect these events at first. The cultists on footfall, the cultists on Salas Prime, the cultist attacking the ship and Kunrad's betrayal. What if these are all linked in the same chain? What if they've long since infiltrated the ranks of the Von Valencia servants? What if I, I led those heretics to the sacred planet with my search? No need to blame yourself. If the heretics really had wormed their way into the Von Valencia's ranks by then, they would have found the planet even without you going there. I doubt it. No one except me was particularly interested in the planet. Kunrad, on the other hand, he sympathized with me at f when I first came aboard. He helped arrange an audience with Theodora and supported me in my effort to visit the planet. I never told him plainly why I wanted to go there, but I imagine that that vulture must have figured out that it was something important, something related to the holy faith of the Imperium. And what more, what more could delight a heretic more than defiling a relic? Uh, and that's why you didn't trust me, correct? Yes, Rook Trader. I saw with my own eyes how a member of your family showed his true colours as a servant of the arch enemy. I had already suffered a humili humiliating defeat at the hands of cultists and was afraid of another, of another betrayal. I couldn't be forthright with you, so I studied you, looking for seeds of corruption or the light of righteousness. Uh-oh. And what did you find? A woman who stood shoulder to shoulder with me and helped eradicate the cultists on footfall. Although my opinion of you started to change even before then, back when you agreed to talk to the orphans. Oh, cool. A leader who's willing to honor those who laid down their lives for them and take care of their children is a leader who inspires trust. And the way you acted in that moment, do you remember there was a young man whose grief and confusion had driven him to insolence? You didn't turn a blind eye to his misdeed, but you chose the right words to show him the path to redemption. It was harsh, but necessary like the emperor's truth, like bitter medicine that helps the sick. I learned much about you in that moment, and I want to believe that I wasn't mistaken in my judgment. Okay. So to clarify, you were wounded, you never found St. Argenta's ship, is that right? Yes, I rushed to Theodora the moment I could walk again, and I insisted that on going back to Salas Prime to defend the relic from the heretics. But I was told the warp destroyed the old route to the planet, and that the plotting a new one would take a great deal of time and effort. As if there was anything as if there could be anything more important than protecting the faith and hunting down servants of the arch enemy. In any event, the route was lost and all knowledge of it died in the attack on the ship along with the old navigator. And now we have a new lead. The data that was collected in, in the cultist shrine on footfall. I don't care what that reprobate we executed said, there must be a way to track them down. 
Tell me, Rogue Trader, will you help me in this undertaking? Um, if it's important to you, I will help you. So be it, Rogue Trader, as I stand before the warrant, the embodiment of the Emperor's will marked by his own hand, I vow that I will not relent until the Holy Relic has been returned to the and the heretics punished. And may the light be with us both on this path. Good night. Get out of my warrant chamber. So we got a whole bunch of stuff today. We got a whole bunch of stuff today. Most importantly, we got to find a gift for Jai, right? <laughs> All right. Whoosh. Assess the situation. Okay, that's fine. Hunger's hand. Swipe so football with provisions. Okay, that's. Which planet is this, Janus? Okay. Uh, yeah, restore shipments from Janus. That's that kind of a main quest. Astray. I'm kind of up to date with it. Secrets of the Cult. Oh, yeah, bring Heinrichs to Kiava. Fine. Master of Seals, that's for Jai. Okay, so here's the, a new ruler. Complete a development project of the highest difficulty in your colony. Establish a new colony. colony. Strike a deal with an influential partner. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but we're going to do it. Here we go. Here's a gift. We're delighted to see a gift from the Lord Captain that was worthy of the relationship. Uh, procuring just about anything is a trifle. All it takes is commanding the High Factorum to do just that. As for choosing a gift, however, her ladyship will have to rely on her own acumen. Or the council of members in her retinue. No, I don't, because they're all useless. Heinrichs, you're my last hope, buddy. To what do I owe this visit? What kind of gift do you think I could give to Jai? Mr. Sudari is a dangerous person. And dangerous people like dangerous things. Jai is probably partial to good weapons. She even has a small but enviable collection. Such a gift would not only be practical given her perilous trade, but it would also show that you have taken an interest in her as a person and her tastes. Such demonstrations are very important when dealing with info people with whom you would like to carry favor. With uh, with info in in what? Sorry, want to elaborate there, uh, Heinrichs? Genuinely, that's actually the most help that I think he's been. Uh, I want the Inquisition to take take care of Idira, rid her of me. Uh, sorry, rid rid me of her. What? What do you mean? He can just take... Oh, because she's unsanctioned, right? Oh, so I can... Well, I can just ship poor Adira off to the Inquisition. That seems a bit... That seems a bit excessive, doesn't it? Actually, I like this idea, though. A weapon does sound like a good idea. I wish to give Jai a present. You shall make the arrangements. Wait, hold up. Let's see if I can actually do something. Let's see if let's see if this is what I have to do. Uh Is she not satisfied with stealing from our coffers? Ahem, I humbly apologize. Certainly, leadership. All will be taken care of. Might I ask what you had in mind for your esteemed companion? Giving her a uh, conspicuous pension for luxury. The gift needs to be something remarkable indeed. What does every smuggler's what is what is every smuggler's desire? Her own void ship, which I shall gladly give her. Um, I, you know, I don't think I can give her a void ship. Although it'd be kind of funny. I think a weapon would be nice. Procure an impressive weapon for Jai. I think I know of something that might impress her, your ladyship. This is there is a curious little thing in your arsenal. That is as beautiful as it is deadly, much like your fa uh, your favorite herself. Okay. Wait, did he give me a new item? Oh, is it this? Bloodseeker Cla Clave? Wow. Hey, oh, wait, wait a second. Do I have to give her this? I kind of want that. <laughs> That's a nice weapon. It's a shame it doesn't say in the chat log here what I got. May the exalted one protect you. 
Have you grown bored with our little dog, Sharim? Uh. Wait. Hold up. Oh, I have no doubt you will. Hold, hold up. How do I send her a gift? May the exalted one protect you. Have you grown bored with our little? Is there a sweeter subject in the universe to discuss, Sherin? You have my full attention. Then let us both be silent together about this beautiful feeling, Sherin. Uh. Oh. I, I'm confused. What do I? What do I do now? Has he got something for her, or do I? Classified information. There we go. A gift. There we go. The end is complete. Oh wait, does she? Mm -hmm. So what do I do? Just can like put it right. Put it. Put it right there. That looks cool, though. Huh? May the Exalted One protect you. Have you grown bored with our little dog, Sherin? Oh, I, I guess have no that's... That's it. Right? I guess that's it. Hmm. Okay, well... Guess we move on. Furry Bundus. Artificial facility, unidentified objects. That's the thing here, right? But I, I can't get there. How, so how do I... What did I press? Did that... Am I leaving the map now? Oh, oh. Warp routes. Travel between systems is fraught with uh, mortal peril and takes place in another dimension known as the warp. Only a navigator can plot a course through the warp to the other star, to another star system. Click on the circular button at the bottom of the screen to have the ship's navigator chart new routes to the system you have selected. To initiate travel, left click, okay. A route's color is an indication of its danger level. Green routes are established, uh, are absolute safe, safest. Yellow routes are unpredictable, uh, that events may occur during the jump. Orange routes denote a high probability of the ship coming under attack, even in warp. Red routes are sure sign that the ship will be assaulted by hostile forces during travel. The ship's navigator can make a route safer by spending points of navigator's insight, which can be acquired by discovering and scanning new systems. Chart new routes. Oh, my navigator's insight is zero, so that's not, that's not any good. Oh, to the... Uh, standard scanning could not reveal a route to the selected system, but you can still get there by spending navigation's, navigator's insights to plot a guaranteed direct path. Oh. So this is to the Imperium, okay. So apparently if I click here... Oh, I can spend a point to secure a route. Oh. I can go here. Can I see what's in it? An uncharted system. Ooh. What happened? Jai is intensely, intently rifling through your possessions and does not notice you, or she pretends not to notice you. Void, take it. I have a rat on board my ship. Jai, it's a pleasure to see you in my quarters, notwithstanding whatever nefarious purpose has brought you here. Sherin, there you are. I've been waiting for you. 
Gives you a dazzling smile and says bold as brass. Like it. And just get out. Uh, I think you were trying to rub me. Sherin, you besmirch my heart with the black ink of bitterest insult. If you do not trust me, search me. Uh huh. Draw closer. You want me to search you? Oh, oh, that's not... Oh, dear. That's not searching. How else am I to prove my innocence, Sherin? Whoa, what responses? Check if Jai is hiding anything in her jacket. Plunge your fingers into the mane of her dark hair, where she could be hiding anything. Run your, ja run your hands over her jacket in search of hidden items. Uh, let's do it in a, let's put a, a, a fingers in her hair. Oh my god, what are these camera angles? <laughs> what are those? What are these? Okay. Jai's hair slips between your fingers like silk. It smells of flowers and scorching desert sand. Keep going, Sherin. You will strike lucky yet. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, well, we'll run our hands over her jacket in search of hidden items. What is that? Looks like we're, we're hugging each other. It's, it's not, not quite what I was looking for, but... As your hands slide down Jay's shoulders, she leans into your touch slightly and places her hands on your at your waist, turning the inspection into something closer to an embrace. It looked like an embrace. Thank you. I loved the gift, Sherin. Gift. Your fingers brush against something warm. You take out a tiny decorative wooden box that usually sits on display in your quarters. You open it and find the notes folded inside that reads, Thank you. Okay. So let's draw her closer. And uh, what will you give me in return? Everything the rogue trader desires. Oh, sounds spicy. So it's true what they say about rogue traders. You re oh, damn it. You really are brilliant something something. <laughs> what? Okay. I mean, we had a good time, I guess. Schaefer plus J has been carved into the headboard with a knife. <laughs> thank, th th thanks, Jay. J, J, sorry. Just thinking I needed my, uh... Goods, what is this? Cracked data slate. Okay, final transactions with the Chartist are complete. The Fire Reckoning is now fully equipped. The object has been loaded aboard with its containment intact and placed in the forebay to ensure maximum contact with the target. What is, what is this? an interesting tidbit to find. Well, that was nice, wasn't it? We had a nice little nice little rendezvous with our friend. Wait, what's this stuff? Does she have anything else to say? May the exalted one protect you. Have you grown bored with our little talk, Sherin? No. Okay. Oh, I have no doubt. Okay. Visit. Ooh, some space dust. I like a bit of... Uh-oh. Pirates. Can we fight the pirates, or do we get blown away? Let's have a look.
Cobra class destroyer now. Oh, there's three of them? Three of them. and I might be able to and only be used or I'll only be used during acceleration phase. Wow. He just rammed that guy. Oh, cool. We took damage from the explosion. That's awesome. <laughs> Ow, ow. Ow, ow. Stop it. Stop shooting my ship. I don't really get it. My shields are still at 80. Well, we're at 80. So why, why am I taking damage? Yeah, that was kind of impressive. Oh, he's going to destroy me now, isn't he? So I don't want to get it. They do damage through my shields. Like my shields are up, so why am I not? Why am I taking not? Why am I not taking damage on my shields first before I take damage? I kind of thought that was the purpose of the shields, you know? Torpedoes. You will fire a torpedo salvo. Torpedoes will appear next to the the next turn in priority order. Once that uh, that turn begins, you are able to it, you will be able to direct them. Your own torpedoes can pass the space occupied by your flagship without damaging it. Okay. You see, that just did shield damage to that guy. But he went his his attack just now went through my shields. Even though I still have shields. Let's see what this guy does. Oh nothing. Does that make sense now? Because I went through his shield, so now I'm doing damage. 
But I still have 11 shields at the front, and yet somehow he, he damaged me. Unfortunately, I can't ram him, which is a bit of a shame. God, they do a lot of damage, don't they? See, that went through. That went completely through my shields. So now that'll go through. Huh. Is it when it's dotted lines like this, it's not a complete block, maybe? Oh, look at him, he dodged out the way. Oh no. The, tor <laughs> the torpedo has caused the ship to explode, which caused me to explode. Yeah, sure. Oh, we can kind of skip, make that move go a bit faster. That's great. It's annoying that that guy is just out of range. Oh, it, it wants me to still move? Okay. Like this. Okay, so, it, so why does it say 15 shields if, it, if the damage goes through? You know? I guess it's just damage reduction at this point. These are, uh, these guys are tough. Oh, is that it? Am I done? Oh no. Torpedoes. Yes. Shooting the torpedoes, interesting. Although I think I'm dead here. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. That seems really hard. I'm gonna I'm gonna load back here. That seems really tough. It's so bizarre, like it's my second ever fight, and it's really, really difficult. I know avoid the, the pirates, guys. What's this? Oh, 120. Okay, some fuel. Why not? Some more fuel. Well, I'm not going to try and fight them. Because I have a feeling as soon as I try and do that planet, right, it's probably going to... It's going to initiate the fight, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I know. Not doing that. <sighs> I 
So I think... I think we're done with this zone. Let's go find the new zone. <clears throat> but the... Oh, oh. I was like, what? Why are we looking? Ooh. It's a nice skeleton there. Right. <clears throat> so the thing is, where's my house? Like, my house? Where's, where's my home? Like, where's my system? Let's try this one. Scan is required. Oh, chart new routes. <clears throat> oh, okay. I wish to inform you that the sacred rituals addressed to the spirit of the ship have been performed. The techno litur liturgy and the rite of the machine blessing ended with a de uh, data meditation in order to comprehend the nature of the miracle sent down by the Omnissiah. Acquisition of sacred knowledge has not been recorded. Okay. Um, how the spirit of the voyage ship was able to call upon the power of the machine gun to activate the warp drive remains an unknown. Yet during my medit uh, meditative ritual, the Omnissiah gave me an equally valuable revelation. The sacred spirit that lives in the bowels of the ship's mechanisms differs from other uh, analogous, analogous forms. The spirit holds a unique power that cannot be called anything less than a blessing. So what does this mean? Hypothesis. In extremis, the ship's spirit is capable of making unpredictable calculations and actions. It is impossible to predict how it will behave in any given situation. But I believe the spirit is currently showing obedience, at least for now. I recommend that we continue monitoring the ship and be prepared for new manifestations. Thanks for the report, Pascal. Appreciate it. The Omaziah knows all, comprehends all. Of course he does. We made it. Uh, visit? Visit. Oh. This is a bigger place. Let's have a look at this one. Begin scan. Desert world. Planet exploration and mining. Planets in the Corona's expanse are teeming with valuable resources. Before those resources can be harvested, however, an extractium needs to be set up on the world's surface. Okay. Resources are required to develop colonies and complete ex uh, contracts. You can also use them to trade with various factions. Gotcha. New contracts are now available in the journal. Oh. Contracts are requests issued by your colonies. So by fulfilling them, you can obtain resources, increase your profit factor, or receive unique items. Fulfilling contracts costs a certain amount of resources or share of your profit factor. Cool. So, a human dwelling stands on this barren desert planet. Scouts report that an old hermit lives there who spends his days in prayer to the emperor. Ask the old hermit for a blessing. To the Lord's surprise, the old hermit turned out to be a navigator. And when the old man discovered the noble status of his visitor, he willingly recounted his tale. He had retreated to this planet long ago, back when he was still in his youth, after he had realized that this that his mind would not withstand frequent forays into the immaterium, the realm of the arch enemy. The hermit spoke with pride about how he had worshipped the Emperor each and every moment of his life. But when he mentioned the golden light of the uh, Astronomicon, his voice quivered. When his guests left, he stared after them for a long time, his gaze filled with sadness. Can I... Do you want to set up Extractium? Yes. Oh, cool. So now I get two Adamantium. This one. Ah, oh, cool. Okay. This looks like... This Hulk ship looks like bad, bad news. So let's just check the planets first. What do we got here? Nothing. N nothing. Burning world. Okay. Absolutely nothing. That looks kind of pretty though. Oh, what's this? Plasma batteries. Sure. Scan. 
Oh. So that provides me with five provisions. Awesome. What's this? Okay. And let's see what this Hulk is. Let's save it right here. Oh. Begin scan. Oh, we can land on it. Okay, cool. Let's have a look. Drifting void ship. Let's have a look at what we got here. How do I get to those goods? How do I get up there? Ah. Uh. I don't understand how we even get up there. I tread a path unexplored. I have a feeling this is not going to be a pretty place. The stomach churning blood is on the wall, form a uh, malevolent symbol. Uh -oh. Powers unseen on the right. path. Okay, the dull sound produced by the ventilation system creates the illusion that the ship is breathing. God. This isn't gonna this isn't gonna end well, is it? The world trembles beneath my feet. Oh no. Mad tech priest. It's reassuring. This is bad, very bad. Almost like Grace has forsaken this place. This tech priest can barely stand from the many wounds where pieces of flesh used to be. Yikes. Must be my smuggler's instincts. What did you spot? Where are we looking? Spots a trap. Uh, what, uh... Where, uh... Where is it? What you spotted a trap? I didn't see one. Yeah, okay. That's... That's reassuring. Dark reddish blotches from the words, Oh, our Messiah, the hour is upon us. Let's seize the opportunity. Your imagination is playing tricks on you, making you see faces twisted in a scream uh, in the stations, in the stains on the metal. Job, Pascal. See, right there. Oh, what's this? Secret. Oh dear. No, 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 no. Somehow we avoided anything there, which is great. Minus ten penalty to perception for all attacks made against the wearer. Interesting. Nothing else. Nothing else. Curious how I get. Curious how I get down here. It feels like maybe we go across. Is it a secret door here too? I tread a path unexplored. How fascinating! Yeah, there it is. I better myself through my service. Oh, cool. My success is an irrefutable certainty. Cool. Okay, so I guess we go through the my path. the now fixed door.
So that'll be it for this episode. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.